So after a few videos outdoors, I'm back into the studio to talk to you about power. Powering your camera for longer periods of time can be a challenge, especially if you're adding things like an external monitor, audio recorder, maybe something like a wireless follow focus. All those devices need power, either through a battery or an external power source. So in this video, I'll give you an introduction to DC power and go over options to power your camera or camera rig. It will be a bit of a technical video, but I wanted to give you a complete overview and understanding of this topic. I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. There are chapters to help you navigate. Let's talk about it. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian and welcome to the channel. So all of the devices we use for filming, including our cameras, as well as the batteries, work with DC power, where DC stands for direct current. What comes out of your wall socket at home is AC power or alternating current. I won't go into the differences in this video, but important to know is that only DC power is relevant to our camera gear. Even if you plug it into the wall socket, it always gets converted to DC by an adapter before it reaches your camera or other device. Now bear in mind that this topic is a very complex one, especially when it comes to batteries. But as it is not necessary to know all of the details to power our gear, this is a somewhat simplified explanation. First, let's get some basic physics out of the way. There are a few terms I'm going to be using throughout the video. Those are power in watts, electrical potential or potential difference in volts, current in amps, capacity in amp hour and energy in watt hour. In order to understand power and how the different terms relate to each other, we need the following equations. P equals U times I, where P is power in watts, U is electrical potential in volts, and I is current in amps. So we could also write the equation like this. The next equation is Q equals I times T, where Q is amp hours, I is current in amps, and T is time. So amp hours equals amps times time. Now that we know this, we can better understand the specifications on batteries, power banks, cameras and other devices. Let me walk you through the different options. The first and the most basic power solution is of course the camera's own battery. When you buy a camera, it comes with at least one original battery. You can then decide to buy more batteries to have more runtime. There is then a choice between original batteries and aftermarket or third-party batteries. In my experience, third-party batteries can work as good as the original ones. They might have a slightly lower capacity and durability, but they're also a lot cheaper. Let's take the G9's battery as an example. The specs on this battery tell us that it's a 7.2 volt battery. This tells us that the G9 and other cameras that use this BLF19E battery need a voltage supply of 7.2 volts. 1860 milliamp hours tells us the capacity of this battery and 14 watt hours tells us the total amount of energy stored in this battery. So now that we know the specs of the BLF19 batteries, let's see how long this battery would theoretically last. The G9 draws one amp of current at its max. To make things easy, let's assume it continuously draws that one amp. We can fill in the equation. Amp hour equals amps times time. So 1.86 amp hours equals one times time. So 1.86 amp hours equals time, equals one hour and 52 minutes of recording time on this battery. Of course, this is based on the assumption that it will continuously draw that one amp, which it will not do all the time. The outcome will also be different when using the same battery in a different camera, like for example, a GH5, because it might draw more or less amps. 
Some batteries for some cameras are interchangeable. For example, the G9, GH5 and GH5S all use the BLF19 batteries. However, one thing I want to mention about these batteries in particular is that you can use the BLF19 batteries with the GH6, but some bit rates and some other functions won't be available. Vice versa works fine. You can put the BLK22 batteries from the GH6 into a G9 or GH5 without loss of functionality. A very common type battery for other devices, such as some lights or an external monitor, such as the Atomos Ninja 5, is the Sony MPF style battery. I've got a lot of them and they are very useful for a lot of different devices. More on those later in the video. There are links to some third party batteries that work well in my experience in the description as well as the other products I mentioned if you want to check them out. So what are the advantages of using the camera's batteries? First of all, they're small and easy to pack. It's easy to find and buy more of them for a reasonable price and have enough spares for a full day of shooting. Also, you don't need to connect or attach extra things to your camera. Using the batteries keeps the setup compact and less vulnerable. One of the downsides to using the camera's batteries is that you have to stop recording if the battery runs out and you need to put a fresh one in. Except for when you have a battery grip on it, then you could hot swap the battery in the battery grip. The battery that's in the camera itself will then keep the camera powered while you swap the battery in the grip. Now I don't have a battery grip for the G9 and I'm also not likely to get one and the G86 doesn't support the option to use a battery grip anyway. So for me, hot swapping is not possible. So an ideal use case would be when you're out and about, you're not doing long takes and you have time between takes to swap your batteries out. So for example, for travel videos or vlogging, the second power solution I want to talk about is using a dummy battery, also called a DC coupler. It looks like a battery, but it doesn't contain any cells. Instead, it contains a protection circuit and sometimes a voltage converter. And it has a cable coming out of the bottom that usually has a DC barrel connector at the end. Most cameras have a hole or a notch to put that cable through the battery door. Now there are a couple of different ways you can use this. You can use it with a suitable wall adapter. You can use it with a D-tap connector to a V-mount battery. And you can use it with a USB-C power delivery connector and use a USB-C power delivery power bank or wall adapter. I'll explain more about USB power later in the video. Because D-tap can have a voltage between 12 and 16 volts, the D-tap to DC barrel cable or dummy battery should have an appropriate voltage regulator in it that converts the DTAP voltage into the required voltage for the device you want to power. And finally, you can use it with a DC barrel output on a V-mount battery plate, for example. But you have to know what you're doing because if you make the wrong connection, you could fry your camera. So let me tell you what to pay attention to. Let's start with the wall adapter. Voltage is important when we look at what a particular device requires. Panasonic sells a DC coupler and a suitable wall adapter. This is obviously safe to use. But if you want to use an aftermarket wall adapter or maybe an adapter that you have lying around, you have to make sure that the output doesn't exceed the voltage that the camera requires. In this case, 7.2 volts for the G9. A higher voltage can damage the camera. It also shouldn't be much lower than that because otherwise the camera will not function properly or not function at all. It should also be able to supply enough current to your camera, so the amps. On to USB-C then. There are converter cables on the market that go from USB-C to DC barrel and have a voltage regulator or converter in it so you can use the dummy battery with either a USB-C power bank or wall adapter. 
Note that the voltage converter in the cable to the dummy battery needs the USB-C power delivery 9 volts 3 amps specs from the power bank or wall adapter. So make sure that your power bank or wall adapter has those specs, otherwise it may not work. Quick side note here, the specs on many wall adapters and power banks state a wattage. Now the wattage is the product of the voltage times the amperage. So 9 volts and 3 amps would be 27 watts. That might seem like the right spec, but 27 watts can also be achieved by the product of 5 volts times 5.4 amps, which isn't going to work because the voltage is too low. So make sure that you find out what the voltage and the amperage are. Other devices like the Atomos Ninja 5 can also be used with a dummy battery or battery eliminator. The required voltage and amperage might be different, but the same considerations apply as for the camera's dummy battery. The Ninja 5's dummy battery or battery eliminator for example, takes a voltage from anywhere between 6.2 and 16.8 volts and converts that into what the Ninja needs. So the big advantage of using a dummy battery is that you can have infinite runtime depending on the power source you're connected to. It also makes the camera or other device a bit lighter since there's no actual battery in it. One downside is that there's a cable coming out of the bottom of your camera, making it more vulnerable, and you'll have to do some kind of cable management. Another downside is that if the connection does break, the camera or other device will immediately shut down, and if you were recording, the file may be damaged or lost. An ideal use case for a dummy battery would be in a studio environment where the camera or an external monitor is often in a fixed position and the cables are too. You can just plug it into the wall adapter and forget about it, unless you didn't pay your electricity bill of course. Another use case is when you're using a rig. In this case it can be useful to power all of your devices on your rig from one single power source which then has the dummy batteries connected to it. The most commonly used USB connections for cameras are micro USB and USB-C. Micro USB is limited to 5 volts and I believe a maximum of 3 amps. USB-C is more flexible and can go up to 20 volts if it's USB-C power delivery. If your camera has a micro USB socket, you can use it to extend the runtime of your camera but it won't be able to charge the battery and power your camera. It'll keep the battery topped up at most. With the USB-C and USB-C power delivery in particular, you will be able to power the camera and charge the battery at the same time. You can use these connections either with a USB adapter plugged into the wall or with a suitable power bank. For a camera like the G9 that has a micro USB port, a USB power bank or wall adapter that can supply 5 volts and 2 amps would be suitable. This will keep the camera running but won't charge the battery. For a camera like the G86 that has a USB-C power delivery port, a power bank or wall adapter with a USB-C PD port that can supply 9 volt 3 amps is required to power the camera. This will keep the camera running and charge the battery. The obvious pro of using a USB power bank is of course the extended runtime you get. Also, if you break the connection by accidentally pulling out the USB cable, your camera will keep running because the camera's battery is still in there. This means that you can also hot swap the battery bank and they're also relatively cheap. One of the cons is that there's a cable sticking out of the side of your camera with a rather fragile connection. It also makes your setup a bit bulkier and you'll have to do some cable management. A good use case would be when you're in a setting where you're shooting handheld but you need to have the camera on and powered at all times and you don't want to have a whole rig set up. In the comments of one of my other videos, one of you suggested running a USB cable through your sleeve, connect it to the camera in your hand and connect the other end to a power bank 
that you keep in your pocket. Haven't tried that one myself yet, but it seems like a good option for handheld shooting. V-mount plates and batteries are very commonly used on cameras and rigs. V-mount plates that have different ports are basically power distribution devices powered by a V-mount battery. They convert the voltage of the V-mount battery into different voltages for different ports and connections. Most of them have a D-tap connection, but 12 volt, 8.4 volt and 5 volt are also very common. There are also V-mount battery plates that are just a mount for the V-mount battery. No ports or other electronics. These are becoming more popular because the V-mount batteries themselves are starting to have more and more ports on them, making a distribution plate unnecessary. A V-mount battery is basically a large capacity battery with a voltage of either 14.8 or 26 volts. Nowadays, there are ones that have DTAP ports, USB-C ports, and so on. So you can use them basically as a power bank, but with more different ports and a mounting system. They are being used to power all kinds of devices like cameras, monitors, and lights. Using V-mount batteries is a one-stop solution for powering all of your devices, from an audio recorder to your camera, monitor or even lights. It's a very flexible power solution, especially with the batteries now having all kinds of ports on them. The downside to using V-mount batteries is the relatively high cost of the batteries and the fact that they are usually quite bulky and make your setup a lot heavier. Although now there are smaller ones available. I'll show you in a minute. You also need some sort of mounting plate to attach to your rig. If you use a camera rig where you need to power multiple devices, like on a shoulder rig or even a handheld rig, which I'll show you in a moment, V-mount batteries are a good solution. V-mount batteries are also very useful when you need to power battery-powered lights. Okay, so this is one of my setups with my GH6, Atomos Ninja 5 and a wireless follow focus system, and sometimes my Zoom H5 audio recorder. I use this rig as a shoulder rig or when I need to do longer shoots on a tripod. On the back I have a V-mount plate with multiple ports. On the V-mount plate I have a V-mount to MPF plate because I had so many of those batteries already lying around and the converter plate was very cheap. There are ports that put out different voltages. The D-tap port I'm using to power my GH6 by using a D-tap to USB-C cable with a proper voltage converter in it. This setup allows me to keep the battery in my GH6, keeping it charged and powering the camera. So if I need to swap the MPF batteries on the back, the camera can continue recording while I put fresh MPFs in. One of the 12 volt outputs I'm using to power my Ninja 5 through its dummy battery or eliminator. When I need to swap the MPF batteries on the back, the Ninja will turn off. Not ideal, but at least the GH6 will continue recording. But recently I got this FX Lion Nano 1. V-mount battery and I might start using that on the shoulder rig. There's also a cable that I've made myself to power my wireless follow focus motor. It has a step up voltage converter that converts 5 volt into the 8 volt uh, the motor needs. Lastly I use the USB port to power my Zoom H5. The Zoom H5 also has its own batteries so it'll keep running even when I need to swap the MPFs. Be aware that powering your audio recorder from a source like this, with multiple devices connected, might cause interference noise in your audio. If this happens, there are two things you could do. One is try a different cable with a ferrite core, such as this one. Or use a different power source, like a USB power bank dedicated to just the recorder. When I'm shooting in my studio, I use dummy batteries with my cameras and my Ninja 5, and I have my Zoom H5 plugged in to the wall via USB as well. I usually shoot my videos in my studio on my G9 and use the dummy battery to USB-C 
that's linked in the description. This has been working fine for me and also works perfectly fine with my GH6. When I use my handheld rig, I either use the camera's battery and an MPF um, 750 on the Ninja 5. The bigger ones like the MPF 970s last longer but are a bit too heavy for a setup like this or i use my fx lion nano one to power my g86 over usb c and the ninja with the dummy battery uh, from the dtap port this setup is the best in my opinion if the v-mount runs out the camera will keep recording because it still has its battery in it so there's a sense of redundancy the only thing that will stop working if the v-mount runs out is the ninja but I'm always keeping a spare MPF 750 in my pocket for that situation. For me, this setup is compact enough. If you have any questions or you want to share your own power solutions, drop them in the comments. I really enjoy reading and responding to them. Also, follow me on Instagram. Not very active yet, but follow me anyway. Feel free to share your rig setup and power setup with me. I'd be interested to see what you guys are doing. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some more understanding of the different ways to power your devices. If so, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.